if you read your bulletin, you see that the title of today's message is All Things Are Possible. Now, I want you to understand something. When all things are possible, that kind of suggests that there's a possibility of things that are not possible. Meaning what? That all is possible in Yahuwah. Let's turn to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 19. Chapter 19. Verse number 26. And for those of you who have the Hallelujah Scriptures, you're going to turn to Matithya. Matithya. Verse 26 says, And looking intently, Yeshua said to them, With men this is impossible, but with Elohim all is possible. I mean, oh, 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 did you hear what I just said? I mean, and looking intently, Yeshua said unto them, With men, this is impossible, but with Elohim, all is possible. Oh, how wonderful that is! How wonderful that is! And I just want to literally go to the very next scripture, flip over to the book of Mark, chapter 10. Verse number 27, and when you're there, say, Amen. Amen. You guys are like looking at that. <laughs> okay. Verse number 27 of Mark 10 says, And looking at them, Yeshua said, With men it is impossible, but with Elohim, for with Elohim, all is possible. And looking at them, <coughs> Yeshua said, With men it is impossible, but not with Elohim. With Elohim, all is possible. Amen. That's a little better interpretation of the previous scripture. But I just want to make sure that we get a hold of this. Turn to the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 18. Verse 27, when you're there, say, Amen. Amen. And he said, What is impossible with men is possible with Elohim. And he said, What is impossible with men is possible with Elohim. Listen to me very carefully. I don't know why I was given this wonderful message today for today but there is a possibility that you may have to seriously rely on Elohim in days to come for what is not possible with men is possible with Elohim me. And this is very, 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 very important, and it's very, very, very seriously, because we are heading towards a time where lawlessness is about to prevail. The left is going to get their way. How do we know? Because the outer court is going to be given to the Gentiles for a season. Come on now. And they're going to tread underfoot many of the things that they should have revered until the day of judgment comes. So we need to get ready and be prayed up. Listen, let me tell you something. There's no real rhyme, no reason why this church is going through hell. Because we're standing on what Elohim said. We believe what he said and we live by what he said. And this is why the enemy is not happy. I don't care that he's unhappy. That makes no difference to me. All I care about is that I am pleasing to him. And when I say I, I'm talking you plural. For those of you that are English majors. 
I'm talking about you plural. <coughs> Meaning all of us is I. This is this is seriously, 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 seriously about to come down the pike, and we better be ready. Especially the youth. Our geeky who don't know any better. I feel so sorry for them. They have no future. On this earth. They have eternity with Elohim. <laughs> so I don't care that they're going to be here a little season. Take them home. I'm happy with that. But we need to be prepared. Amen. And let me tell you. The things that are going on now. In the world should make the average person's skin crawl, and yet we rejoice because our Father said it was going to come to pass. We're just watching it unfold. So if we're living in what He said, that's a good thing. Because no matter what man does, no matter what the devil does, no matter what all the cohorts do, no matter how they attempt or try to do it, they will not prevail because the word of Elohim that is the same yesterday, today, and forever will come to pass and we will see it to the very end. Amen. It doesn't matter who you are or where you're from. You either believe Elohim or you don't. But on the day of judgment, you're going to wish you had. <laughs> I would love to be a fly in that room just to hear. But I think my heart would break with Yeshua's because I would feel the same love he has for them and then I'd fly away. <laughs> That's for him. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know how sad it is when I hear people say, well, he died so and so. And all, my, all I can say is, I hope he was right with Elohim. Or she was right with Elohim. Especially with someone that I really didn't know. Do you understand what I'm saying? Something happens to you when you truly have a relationship with Elohim where you just begin to love people and you don't even know why. Like I told you, what happened with me and the, and the Jewish people. There's a love in my heart for them that's second to no one. And that's amazing. For me. But that's just part of my testimony. Turn to the Gospel of Mark. We're going to cover a lot of scripture here. Go to chapter 9. The book of Marcos. Or Mark. Chapter 9. I'm going to read 10 verses. 17 through 27. chapter 9 and it starts and one of the crowd answering said teacher I bought my son who has a dumb spirit and wherever he sees him he throws him down and he froths at the mouth froth is by the way foaming and gnashes his teeth and he wastes away and I spoke to your Talmudim or disciples that they should cast him out but they were not able and he answered him saying oh unbelieving generation how long shall I be with you how long shall I put up with you bring him to me so they brought him to him and when he saw him he immediately fell and threw him into convulsions falling on the ground and rolling all over frothing and he said to his father, how long has he been like this? And he said, from childhood. And often it had thrown him both into the fire and into water to destroy him. But if it, <laughs> but if it is at all possible for you, have compassion and help us. And Yeshua said unto him, if thou art able to believe, 
If thou art able to believe, all is possible to whom believes. All is possible to him who believes. All is possible to him who believes. And immediately the father, and immediately the father of the child cried out and said, with tears, I believe Adonai, help my unbelief. And when Yeshua saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit and said unto him, You deaf and dumb spirit, I order you, come out of him, and never again enter into him. And crying out and convulsing him much, it came out of him, and he became as one dead, so that many said he was dead. But Yeshua taking him by the hand, lifting him up, and he arose. And I want you to understand something. There's some wonderful passages of words here. And the thing that I really want to focus on is the very simple condition that all things are possible if you believe. All things are possible if you believe. Now I want you to notice something. If you're having issues with your faith or whatever you are believing in for or believing in, you also have the right to say, help me with my unbelief. You can cry out to him and say, help me with my unbelief. Please, please, pretty please. Let me tell you something. From Genesis to Revelation, this word is meaningless if you don't believe. You could have, you could sit there and recite it word for word. From Genesis to Revelation, from the beginning to the end, you could recite it and not miss one word with the book closed. But if you don't believe it, it's futile. It's useless. It doesn't mean anything. It has no value. Why? Because only to those who believe is all things possible. This is really very important. Very, very important. Now, if you read Isaiah 53, 5, and I'm not going to turn you there, it basically tells us that by His stripes we are healed. See, but do you believe that? Do you believe that? Okay? Now, I was wondering why all is possible with such a message that was so intended in my heart last weekend when I got home and I got it all done and it was all well and good and I wrote it down and I figured I could go back and rewrite it and look at it, you know, and have fun with it and enjoy it. And I usually do that on Thursdays because Thursdays is my day where I really get together with Elohim to find out what's in his heart for our church for that weekend and to bestow it upon me that I may write it down and bring it to you on Saturday. But that wasn't going to be the case this week. We had a powerful Bible study on Wednesday night. And I got home. Everything was fine. I prepared to go to bed. And as soon as I laid on my bed, my entire body began to quiver. I was shaking uncontrollably. My temperature rose to about 103 to 105 degrees. I got up and my whole body was freezing like a, I, I was in so hot and I was freezing cold and shivering everywhere. I put on a pair of socks, another pair of pants. I put on a t-shirt. I had a, 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 one of those woolen blankets folded over twice and a quilt and I still couldn't get hot enough. Something is about to happen because the enemy took me down. When I got this word. See, if he can take me down, he's got the flock. If he only takes one of you out, he's only got one. 
And let me tell you, I spent the entire night in this condition without a wink of sleep, completely exhausted by morning. I mean, I was in hell and back. But at around midnight, ooh, how many of you know that sometimes you got to get to that midnight hour? I began to pray. I began to worship. I began to thank him. I began, you know what? What's the worst thing that the devil can do? Kill me? That makes Brother Cisco the new pastor. The what? It still continues. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yep. But I praised, I worshiped, and I continued all night long. If you're not going to let me sleep, I'm going to worship. You are not going to take his worship from me simply because I'm shaking here and I can barely talk. No, no, I'm going to worship. And I worshiped all night long and the very next day I felt like I'd been hit by a freight train and then the thing stopped and backed up and ran me over a second time. Every joint in my body hurt. Everything about me said, oh, 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 oh. But I still took the time to worship him. Why? Because all is possible to them who believe. Yes. And he was the one who rose me up. He was the one who stood there by my side. No matter what I was going to say. Don't worry. All will be well. Hang in there. And he is receiving glory and honor at this very moment. For everything I went through that night. And he'll receive it every time I testify about it. Glory be to Elohim. Glory be to Yeshua. And thank you Ruach HaKodesh for praying with me when I was praying in the spirit. Oh, hallelujah, glory be to Elohim. Blessed be his holy name. The question is, do you believe? All things are possible. I'm living proof I'm here today. Yes. Oh, you guys should have seen me Thursday. You all would have cooked me some soup. It was bad. It was bad. And I have no idea why he did it. And this is the only answer I got. Through the entire night in my spirit, it resounded, all things are possible, all things are possible, all things are possible. If you believe. How wonderful. How wonderful. Whoo! That was fun. <laughs> Let's go to John 14. Gospel of John 14. Yohanna. Now, the condition for all things are possible is that you have to believe. Okay? Now, here's a little warning. Verse number one Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in Yahuwah. Believe also in me. And that me is Yeshua. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in Yahuwah. Believe also in me. You see, one of the things that the enemy has figured out is that if he can throw all kind of wrenches into the woodwork, and if he can get your heart to be troubled, Maybe, just maybe, he could create a little doubt. A little doubt. Okay? Now, let me tell you how significant this is. When you believe, it's either 100% or it's not. If you are 0 .0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. To like the 10th decimal point. And you have that little bit of doubt. That little bit of unbelief. Your 99.9999 is null and void. You need that other little bit to make it all 100%. You're either going to believe them or you're not. And that's just how it is. Listen, I didn't say this. He did. It's all possible if you believe. Now you saw when the man said, I believe, 
help me now with my unbelief. That when he spoke to this deaf and dumb spirit, it left. The thing that I find quite interesting is that when the boy was coming to him and the spirit saw Yeshua, it dropped him to the ground, foaming and wailing and carrying on. And while he's carrying on on the floor, Yeshua's carrying on a conversation with the Father. That doesn't mean anything to him. He's got that under control. Do you believe he's got that under control? And that's why he asked the Father, do you believe? We need to make sure that we really understand this. If you worry just a little bit, you're in trouble. And let me give you a second example. Let's go to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9. Okay. I'm going to read verse 27 again, then I'm going to take it through to 30. And Yahuwah, but Yahuwah, yes. taking him by the hand, lifted yes, him sure. up and saying, and he rose. And he came out of him, and the Talmudin asked him separately, why were we unable to cast him out? And he said to them, it is because this kind is impossible, since it comes out by fasting and praying. Not only do you have to believe, sometimes you've got to fast and pray to deal with these. Okay? And then it says, and going from there, he passed through Galilee, or Galilee, and he did not want uh, anyone to know. Okay, but this is interesting. Now, the apostles or the uh, Talmudim that were with him, who had power and authority that he gave them, were unable to cast this demon out. Meaning what? There's a hierarchy of demons. There's a whole hierarchy from five-star generals and four-star generals, three-star, two-star, one-star, down to buck privates, okay? Most of us can handle a buck private. I'd say we can even go to sergeant. Some of us can even get to the lieutenant ranks. But can you handle one of these generals? Can you handle one of these generals? I'm going to share something with you which is very interesting. For every level you reach in Elohim, the enemy has a devil waiting for you. For every level that you reach in Elohim, the devil has an enemy, one of his own, waiting for you. And he's going to bring it to you to see if you really believe. That's when, you, that's when you're going to know if all things are really possible, depending on how you believe. I'm telling you, we're going to have to get seriously ready for what's coming. And I wish there were six million people listening to this. Because it's happening and it's happening now. And it wouldn't matter if six million heard it, maybe three would get it right, besides us. Do you understand what I'm saying? This is sound teaching, church. And I'm not standing up because I don't have anything better to do. I can still be recovering at home with some chicken soup. But I'm already recovered. Why? Because I believe. Yes. I'm good to go. I could also take the chicken soup. Hello. That's another story. That's another story. It's very, very important that we really understand. We have a lot of scripture to cover, and we're going to cover it all. So prepare to go home by 5 o'clock, and everything else will be fine. Now, go, go to the book of Matthew. Chapter 8. Verse number 13. Amen. And Yahuwah said to the captain, Go, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that hour. Yeshua. Oh, yes. And Yeshua said to the captain, Go, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. 
and his servant was healed out. Now notice that nothing happens until you believe. I want you to realize how serious this is. When Yeshua went back to his hometown, okay, where everybody knew who he was, okay, oh, that's Yeshua, yeah, the carpenter, you come fix my window. None of them believed him, or few believed. And he was unable to do too many things there because of their unbelief. <coughs> the miracle working power of Yeshua, the blood, the cross, and everything that Elohim stands for goes null and void when you don't believe. Null and void. It will do nothing for you. You could claim it till the cows come home. Until you believe it, all you're going to get is a herd of cattle. But your, whatever you're believing for won't come to pass until you believe. That's amazing. Now, if you really want things to come to pass, believe things in the perfect will of God for your life. Those things will come to pass quickly. Why? Because that's established by covenant. And when you are taking part in the covenant and you believe what he's doing in covenant your prayers are answered by covenant. Why? Because all things are possible. Everything is possible if you believe. All is possible if you believe. So you have to believe. Go to the Gospel of John. We're going to flip all over John, Matthew, Mark, Luke and flip and flap and back and forth. Chapter 5. Look at that, say amen, verses 43 to 47. Amen. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him you will receive. How are you able to believe when you are receiving esteem, one from another, and the esteem that is from the only Elohim you do not seek? Do not think that I shall accuse you to the Father. There is one who accuses you, Moshe, or Moses, in whom you have put your expectation. For it is, for if you believe Moshe, you would have believed me, since he wrote of me. But if you have not believed his writings, how shall you believe my words? See, Moshe wrote of him. They didn't believe he came to speak of himself. He didn't believe. This is going to be one of the biggest problems that we're going to face soon. And I'm going to show it to you. See, we have a lot of people in the world today who when you tell them the truth, they'll call you something other than. Okay? If they're into psychology, then you have some type of a phobia. Or psychiatry. There's something wrong with you. Okay? You're some kind of a fool. And that's really going to be a very interesting dilemma as we continue to unfold in the words of Elohim. It's coming. It's going to be here. Now, listen to this. When we find ourselves in those dilemmas, we really need the Ruach HaKodesh to help us speak. Okay? Because they are absolutely sure that there's something wrong with you. They can't see the fact that the one who needs help desperately is them. Because they're blinded to the truth. Now, go back to chapter 4 of John right there. Flip back a couple of pages to chapter 4. Let's go to verses 48 to 54. Yeshua said unto him, If you do not see signs and wonders, you do not believe, you do not believe at all. The nobleman said to him, Adonai, come down before my child dies. Yeshua said to him, Go, your, your son lives. 
And the man believed the word of Yeshua, uh, the word that Yeshua spoke to him and went. And while he was going down, his servant met him and reported saying, his son liveth. And he asked him uh, the, the hour which he became better. And he said, yesterday at the seventh hour, the inflammation left him. And the father knew that it was at the same hour which Yeshua said to him, your son liveth. And he himself believed and his whole household. Now listen to me very carefully. What I really want to focus on this is the very beginning. If you do not see signs and wonders, you do not believe. This has plagued the church since its inception. Back in the book of Acts. Okay? And this is very serious because I'm going to show you biblically now certain things that are going on and you will see for yourselves this is going to be very detrimental. Those signs and wonders are going to be very detrimental in the end. And I'm about to show you now. Turn to Matif Yahoo or Matthew 24. I would recommend you go to the book of Luke and work back up uh, a little bit. I mean the book of Mark and work back a little bit. Matthew 24. Okay. Verse 24. 24, 24. Now, false for false messiahs and false prophets shall arise and they shall show great signs and wonders so that to lead astray if possible even the chosen ones okay all things are possible if you believe but if you're looking for signs and wonders the enemy is going to bring you all kinds of signs and wonders and I'm going to prove it to you biblically Okay? Go to Revelation 13. Or Razon 13. Okay? I'm going to read a passage of scripture here which is a little lengthy, but we need to have it. Verses 11 through 18. If you're there, say Amen. Amen. And I saw another beast come up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke like a dragon. You notice the imposter here. You notice the imposter here. Mm -hmm. And he exercised all the authority of the first beast in his presence, and causes the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he does great signs, so that even he makes fire to come down from the Shamayim, on earth before men. You can see the wonders. And his head, uh, uh, and he leads astray those dwelling on the earth because of those signs which he was given to do before the beast, saying to those dwelling on the earth to make an image to the beast whose wound was whose wound by the sword was uh, was healed, and yet he lives. And he leads astray those dwelling on the earth because of those signs which was given to do before the beast, saying to those dwelling on the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by a sword, yet lives. And there was given to him, and there was given to him to give spirit to the image of the beast, <clears throat> that the image of the beast should both speak and cause to be killed as many as would not worship the image of the beast. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to be given a mark upon their right hand and upon their forehead, and that no one should be able to buy or sell that, except he that was marked with the name of the beast and the number of his name. Here is wisdom. He who has understanding, let him calculate the number of the beast, for the number of, of a, for the number is of a man, 666. Now listen to me very carefully. These verses have just described the false prophet. The false prophet is a Christian man coming out of the church. He is a Christian man coming out of the church and he's going to do great wonders. Okay? 
There are many who believe <clears throat> that this great man is our present Pope. The Pope who's there right now. Okay? And if he is or if he isn't, but he's going to be from the church. Okay? And everything in, this, in, in the Word points to him. So I tend to believe he's him. Be very careful. He's going to have great signs, miracles, and wonders. Now, the thing that makes it so exciting is that you have Satan, you have the church, you have the Antichrist, and they're all in cahoots together. And this man from the church is going to be the greatest of all deceivers because he's going to actually take the church away from Elohim, the church away from Yeshua, and introduce them to Satan himself as the Antichrist. And they're going to worship him. How many people in church right now do you think will take the mark to be able to buy, eat, or whatever else? Not to mention all the great deals they're going to get. Let me make it very simple, very plain, and very clear. If any one of you takes the mark of the beast, you are going to hell. You have established a covenant with Satan himself. And you will spend eternity with him in the lake of fire. So that's all I'm going to say about that. I'm just going to prove these points so you understand. Look, 2 Corinthians 11, 13, and 14 clearly declares that Satan himself can transform himself into an angel of light. If he shows up to you as an angel of light, are you going to be like John and drop down and worship him? And, and Razal, when he did it a couple of times, he, don't do that, John. Hey, get up. Don't worship me. I'm, I'm a servant like you. A true messenger of Elohim will tell you, don't bother me and help you get up and say, you have to worship him. I'm a servant just like you. But this one, when he shows up, when you drop down and worship him, oh, he's going to stand there and let you do it. He's going to stand there and let you do it. Now, let me give you the key to whoever, whatever, may show up before you demanding worship. Go to Psalms 22. Verse 16. For the dogs have surrounded me. A crowd of evil ones have encircled me, piercing my hands and my feet. <laughs> now, let's just make sure we got that straight, okay? Go back to the Gospel of John. Okay, I'm going to hold on to that because I'm going to come back to it. But go to the Gospel of John, okay? And go to chapter 19. All right, chapter 19, verses 34 through 37. I'm going to read them after I read this one more time. Okay, that verse 22. And they pierced my hands and feet. Okay, and they pierced my hands and feet. Verse 34 of 19. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and instantly blood and water came out. And he who has seen, and he who has seen has witnessed, and his witness is true. And he knows that he is speaking the truth in order that you might believe. He's speaking the truth in order that you might believe. For this took place in order for the scriptures to be filled. Not one of his bones shall be broken. And another scripture that says, they shall look upon him whom they pierced. They pierced my hands and feet. They will look upon him who they pierced. They pierced my hands and feet. They will look upon him who they pierced. Did you get it? Whoever shows up to you, I don't care who they are, what they are, or where they're from. If they're declaring worship to you, 
Tell them, I want to see your hands, your feet, and I want you to show me your side. I want to see your piercings. Why? Because Satan didn't go to the cross. It was Elohim and Yeshua HaMashiach. As the word and as the Ruach HaKodesh, everything that was with him went to the cross, and he's the only one who has those marks. No one else does. So if someone shows up to you pre pretending to be the Mashiach, or pretending to be Yeshua, <coughs> or anything, all you want to see is those feet, you want to see those hands, and excuse me, but I'd like to take a look at the side just for perfection. And I'll guarantee you, you're going to look upon him whom they pierced. Then you know to bow down and worship. Then you know to follow him. See, but what's going to happen is that the false one is going to come, is going to show the sign miracles and wonders, and they're going to get caught up in sign miracles and wonders, and they're not going to require for him to show the truth about who he is. Because they're going to be caught up and say, oh, look at this sign. Oh, it caused fire to come down. Ah! So what? He caused fire to come down from heaven. Good! Show me the piercings! You lying devil, you. There goes your head. You understand what I'm saying? This is going to be happening with us here. Listen, all things, all is possible. Period. All is possible if you believe. But see, if you believe signs, miracles, and wonders, all is possible to you too. Remember that all is possible depending on what you believe. Come on now. Now we're going to hit you over the head. Whatever you believe, that's what's possible to you. And if you believe the devil, hell is possible for you. You may have a great time here. But when it's all said and done, you're going to spend eternity with him. Separated from Elohim. That's just how it is. Look, I didn't say this. They did. I'm telling you what they said. I'm giving you scripture after scripture, precept upon precept, concept upon concept, so that you can see we're heading down a very treacherous path in the beginnings of sorrow that we're living in, and the church doesn't even know what's going on in a lot of places. There are many churches today who don't even read the Bible, or of course, as we call it, the scriptures, or the word of Elohim. So where are they going to be? They're going to be among those following the signs. The miracles and wonders. Why? Because when Yeshua was here, he did many signs, miracles, and wonders. So much of the that's what they were looking for. And he warned them, listen, don't look for the signs. Okay? The only time you look for signs is when you're going to need to get off the highway. Otherwise, you wind up in Utah. And you live on the big island. Hello? Do you get what I'm saying? It's very, very important. We're going to get ready to close this in a little bit. Okay? Go back to the Gospel of uh, John, but this time flip back to chapter 6. From 19 to chapter 6. Verses 38 to 40. Me. Now listen to this. Because I have come down out of the Shamayim, not to do my own desire, but the desire of him who sent me. For this is the desire of the Father who sent me, that all he has given me, I should lose none of it, but should raise it in the last day. He's talking about us. And this is the desire of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the bane and believes in him should possess everlasting high. And I shall raise him up in the last day. That's us. This is who we are. That's us. Okay? That's us. There's no getting around it. Okay? Now we've had all the fun that we're going to have up to today. 
Now I'm, I'm about to put you in check. You need to check yourself right now when we get to the next verse. Okay? It doesn't matter, like I said, who you are, where you are, or where you're from. You either believe or you don't. If you believe in Elohim, all of the things of Elohim are possible. If you don't believe in Elohim, it's over. None of the things of Elohim are possible. You can make all kinds of things happen because you have your own will here, but the things of Elohim will never come to pass in your life unless you believe. All is possible only if you believe. Now, let me share something with you that's going to be kind of fun. And I'm going to close this with some fun, okay? Fun. At least I am, I don't know you guys. <laughs> Let's go to 1 Timothy. Chapter 4. We're only going to go over one more verse and we're going to close it out, okay? And then we'll pick up our offerings. This, the anointing was so beautiful, I didn't want to stop to collect. Okay? 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 12. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 12. Okay? That no one look down on your youth, but be an example to the believers in word and in behavior, in love, in spirit, in belief, in cleanliness. Does this scripture describe you? Does this verse of scripture describe you? Let no one look down on your youth, but be an example to the believers in word, <coughs> in behavior, in love, in spirit, in belief, in cleanliness. Does this verse of scripture describe you? Well, we don't know if it describes you. Okay, so let's break it down. Okay? First of all, are you an example? If you're created in his image and in his likeness, is that your example? Okay? To the believers, meaning what? The church. And guess what? If you are this in the church, guess what the world is going to see? I'll leave that up to you. Okay? Now, your behavior. What does your behavior say about you? Do you conduct yourself like a Kellogg's Frosted Flake? in the world and then come into the church to get some milk? <laughs> the milk of the word. You, you, know, you can get the milk of the word. Do you understand what I'm saying? When you go out in the world, are you one way and when you come back to the church, are you somebody else or are you the same all the way around? Remember that um, Peter had to be corrected for that because he was one way with the Gentiles and one way with the, one way with the Jews. Okay. Are you the same? Now, why is this important? Because the one that is within you is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if he's the same, and he's in you, and you're created in his image and likeness, then you should be the same. Your behavior should be that which exemplifies your behavior in the kingdom. You conduct yourself on earth as though you are already in the kingdom. Is that your behavior? How about in love? Do you have a love relationship with Elohim and the oneness of the Trinity that's second to none that no one can come between? Do you love your fellow man like he loves? Do you love your neighbor as yourself? What do you love you at all? Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay? Or do you love on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, you take off Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sunday because you're in church on Saturday? So three days a week you would love. Three other days a week they got to figure out what the heck you're in. I'm serious. This is going on today. You can see this in church all the time. 
It happens all the time. People go out and party all weekend and think it's okay to because you party just a couple of days, it's okay to go to church and then get it right. And then go back and party next week. No. No, you either love the Father with everything that is within you or you don't love Him at all. That's just how it is. You either love your neighbor or you don't. You either walk the walk of love or you don't. Okay? And it's visible. It's visible. And listen, all this is a lot easier said and spoken of than done. Mm -hmm. I can think of all kinds of reasons why I don't like you. And then I got to say to myself, well, that's okay. I'm not supposed to like him. I'm supposed to love him. <laughs> okay? And then, of course, I got to do one of these. Yeah. Give myself a swift kick in the butt. Do you understand what I'm saying? You gotta be able to do these things. Let's go to the next one. Okay? Are you an example in spirit? And this is very simple. Live in the spirit and you will not fulfill the loss of the flesh. You can't get any simpler than that. Okay? Now, are they able to see that you truly believe. Now you know that believe is a verb. It's an action word. Show me your belief by your works. Exactly do you believe in? What do you believe in? Well, I believe in Elohim. Okay, so then that means you love me, right? Uh huh. That means that your behavior is good, right? Uh huh. That means that you're in the spirit, right? Uh huh. That means that you believe, huh? Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. You just described me a badi a badi. Do you get what I'm saying? Listen, if you go home and just take this one verse of scripture and sit and meditate on it, you'll find out there's a lot of work to be done in you. Now remember, that's plural, meaning what? Look, you. Good heavens, there's three pointing at me, only one at you. Well, even my thumb points are wrong. Well, look, the hitchhiker's thumb. Please. <laughs> now it's three to two. Do you see what I'm saying? Folks, we got to get it together. We're going to, listen, we're going to be the only light the world is going to have until they decapitate us. And then we can join the others in the throne of grace. How long? Before you venge your blood, how long? Before you venge your blood, how long? I'm waiting for you, how long? You understand what I'm saying? I want you to, I'm making this a little bit silly and stuff so you guys should remember it because it's really, really, this is very powerful stuff. Does this describe you? I'm going to be honest with you. I fail at some of these at times. It doesn't describe me. I mean, it describes who I should be. It doesn't, doesn't describe who I am. Okay? And it's true. If we're really going to be honest, this is true of all of us. And, then, and when I say all of us, I mean everybody in the church worldwide. Okay, those who are the remnant that are truly following like they're supposed to. Now listen to me very carefully. Here is where we really, really get cleanliness. Yep, I washed my hands to take two showers a day. I'm clean. Really? Change your clothes too? Wow! How about your socks? <laughs> oh man. Think about it. Squeaky clean. That's squeaky clean. My name is Mr. Clean. <laughs> Listen to me very carefully. Yeah. This has everything to do with God's moral standard in you. Are you chaste? Do you have 
the moral standard inside you that establishes you your morality not because of the things of the world but because of the things and the principles established by covenant in the kingdom now does it describe you uh, I still take two showers a day <laughs> okay I'm happy for you do you understand what I'm saying all is possible if you believe but there are standards that you must meet you need to live right you need to walk right you need to speak right you know the one thing that I really can't stand is when Christian men get together and they begin to kid with one another and they make jokes and they call each other names why do you do that Or women who sit down and gossip for hours about anything and everything under the sun that has nothing to do with the kingdom. Yeah. Why do you do that? Your words are all messed up when you do that. You're not living in the spirit when you do that. You, there's no love inside you when you do that. The moral standard has flown the coop. You can't do any of that stuff. So in closing, are you an example to the believers? Are you as an example to the believers in your word, behavior, love, spirit, belief, and cleanliness? You think about it. I know I have to. Of course, most of you are so clean, you know, you have to worry about it. <clears throat> now, we're going to pick up our offering now. But before I do, I want to close the service. We're going to get the offering after. I hope those of you listening by phone were blessed. Oh, Baruch. Okay. Father, we come before you in the blessed name of Yeshua HaMashiach to recognize you as, Elo, uh, as Elohim or Yahuwah Elohim. This was such a beautiful word you gave us today. Thank you. So edifying, so uplifting. Father, if there's any area of our belief that's not right, help us with our unbelief. If there are any areas that we have to be taken care of, such as our cleanliness, our love, our word, our faith, our spirit, anything, help us to become the people that you need us to be. Please help us to represent you here the way you should be represented. I want to thank you for everything you've done, especially here today. So glorify yourself as we give you glory and honor. And as we prepare to pick up our offering, would you be so kind as to bless it also, that it may further your kingdom. In Yeshua HaMashiach's mighty name. And all of God's people said, Elohim's people, Amen. 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 Amen.